There is a seemingly endless list of superstars that Brazilian football has given us. Along with the likes of Pele, Marta and Ronaldo, there are so many more from Brazil who have mastered the art of Joga Benito. The name of the first superstar of the great footballing nation is tragically overlooked. Arthur Friedenreich played for Brazil at the start of the 21st century and helped grow the game greatly as well as inspiring those from BAME backgrounds. He remains an icon to many to this day, but does still not get anywhere near the credit he deserves. This is a story of Arthur Friedenreich, Brazil's first superstar. Arthur Friedenreich was born in Sao Paulo on the 18th of July, 1892. He was the child of Oscar, a German businessman, and Matilde, a black laundry worker who was the daughter of freed slaves. Slavery had only been abolished in Brazil four years before Arthur was born, and opportunities across the country were extremely limited for black people, and this included football as well, which at the time was seen as a white-only sport. Since the Portuguese had settled in Brazil in 1500, non-whites had suffered from forced labour and rife discrimination across the country, and Brazil had imported a total of around 3.5 million slaves, more than anyone else, a figure that was six times that of the United States. Arthur would play football a lot as a child, and was well supported by his father. Fortunately, Arthur was able to overcome the barrier of segregation, as Oscar had played for Germania, a team made up of German immigrants. Arthur was allowed to join them as a 17-year-old, as they felt he had white features. He would often spend hours straightening his hair, as well as putting rice powder on his face, in order to look as quote-unquote white as possible. Freedom Wright became the first black player to play in the Brazilian leagues, and quickly gained praise. His pace, dribbling and skills drew many admirers. His dribbling was described by many as choreographed, and many saw him as the first to play football in the style Brazilians called Joga Benito, aka the beautiful game. Freedom Wright played for four different clubs in the first four seasons of his career, and he became the league's top scorer in the Sao Paulo League in 1912 and 1914. 1914 would also prove to have another big moment for both him and Brazil. In 1914, a side made up of Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo players faced Exeter City as the Devonian side partook in a tour across South America. Today, this game is said to be the first ever match the Brazil national team played. Brazil won 2-0, but Friedenreich was involved in a collision that saw him lose two teeth. Nonetheless, it was a huge moment in Brazilian history. Not only was it the dawn of the most successful international team in the world, having a black player represent the nation in Friedenreich was a big moment for BAME people across the country. The nation's first superstar being black gave black children across the country an idol, as well as hope they could defeat discrimination and succeed as he had done. Football in Brazil had been introduced as a game for the elite, but as it grew, more and more players from working class backgrounds partook, and they played with freedom and joy, something synonymous to the Brazilian game that we know. Freedom Reich was a symbol of this. He continued scoring goals for fun, becoming the top scorer in the Sao Paulo League in 1917, 1918, 1919, 1921, 1927, and 1929. After being something of a journeyman, he settled with Paulistano in 1918, where he would remain for 11 years. In 1919, he had his greatest moments. The 1919 South American Championship, now known as the Copa America, would be hosted in Brazil. Freedom Reich's goal-scoring prowess meant he would be the first name on the team sheet for La Sela Sal. Brazil reached the final, with Freedom Reich scoring three times along the way, and they would face Uruguay in Rio. The game finished goalless after 90 minutes, and so went to extra time. After this period finished goalless too, the teams agreed to play another 30 minutes of extra time to decide the winner, meaning the game lasted for a whopping 150 minutes. Fortunately, it wouldn't take long into the bonus extra time for the game to be settled. Arthur Friedenreich would score in the 122nd minute. Brazil held on and won the first ever major trophy in their history. Arthur Friedenreich would quickly become a national hero. The streets across the country were flooded with people celebrating, and Friedenreich's boot was paraded across the streets of Rio de Janeiro with a banner saying, The Glorious Boot of Friedenreich. A black boy who had grown up with racist rules, preventing him from being able to enjoy a lot of the things white people could have, had broken through the barriers to become the pride of Brazil. 
His stardom did wonders for black footballers. Clubs across the nation would now allow black players to be in their squad, and more would play for their national team. Football's popularity spread across Brazil, as it started to become a huge part of the nation's culture. Palestino would be invited to play friendlies across Brazil, as millions wanted to see Arthur Friedenreich play in the flesh. Unfortunately, despite the progress, the fight against racism continued. The 1921 Copa America would be hosted in Argentina, and before the tournament, the Argentines announced that only white players would be able to participate. Sadly, Brazilian president Epitacio Pessoa banned black players from representing the national team, as he felt they brought shame to the nation, and so Friedenreich missed both the 1920 and 1921 editions of the tournament. As Brazil failed in these editions, pressure mounted on Pessoa to revoke his ruling, and eventually, the president did. Friedenreich took part in the 1922 championships, and played in the first two games before suffering an injury. Nonetheless, his efforts were not in vain, as Brazil won the championship by defeating Paraguay in the final. Paulistano would later tour Europe, and crowds there were also amazed by his abilities. The media there crowned him the king of football, and he would be the first of many Brazilians to come to Europe and wow the crowds. He continued playing for many years, as Brazilian football turned towards professionalism in the 1930s. He was initially expected to travel with Brazil for the 1930 World Cup, but a communication mix-up meant that only players in Rio sides would partake, and so Arthur Friedenreich was left at home. After leaving Paulistano in 1929, he played for the likes of Sao Paulo, Atletico Mineiro and Flamengo, and continued ringing in the goals. He would retire from football in 1935 at the age of 43. There can be no doubt that Friedenreich scored a sensational amount of goals, but the exact number that he did is heavily disputed. Many claim he scored a total of 1,329, but this is heavily disputed. Oscar Friedenreich and one of Arthur's old teammates kept a log of all the goals he had scored, but this mysteriously disappeared in the 1960s. After retiring, Arthur Friedenreich worked in an off-license, and towards the end of his life, he faced a battle with Alzheimer's. The treatment for the disease saw him lose most of his money, as the memories he formed on the pitch slowly slipped away from him. Arthur Friedenreich died on the 6th of September 1969 at the age of 77. Only the next year, Brazil won their third World Cup, with black players such as Pele, Jairzinho and Carlos Alberto all starring. Players who may not have been able to make a career in the beautiful game without the influence of Arthur Friedenreich. The impact that Arthur Friedenreich had is immeasurable. He grew up amongst the system set up against people like him, but he managed to fight the system and become a national hero, and helped break down discriminatory laws in the game and allow black Brazilians to succeed in the game too. As well as this, he was the first superstar of a nation now synonymous with football. He won Brazil the first of their many major honours, and his celebrity status made the game spread rapidly and become a huge part of Brazilian life. Without him, there may well be no Xoga Benito, no Pelé, no Ronaldo, and no legendary Brazil sides. The list of great players to come from Brazil is endless, but Arthur Friedenreich was the first, and so he should be spoken about in the same sentences as the Brazilian legends we all know and love. Brazil have mastered the beautiful game, but we must remember that Brazilian football was the house that Arthur Friedenreich built.